Hello and welcome to another quick lesson with me, Jacob Woolcock. Today I'm going to show you how to make a digital scavenger hunt using one app on your iPad that will get you up and about, moving around, trying to complete your own scavenger hunt. By the time you finish the tutorial, you should have your own scavenger hunt that looks something like this. And the aim of the game is that you can then go and use your camera on your iPad to add pictures to all of those placeholders so that you can fill in your own digital scavenger hunt. So to complete our quick lesson, we're going to follow five simple steps. In step number one, we're going to come up with an idea. And in Keynote, we're going to create a new presentation and we're going to add some styling and some backgrounds to make our page look great. Then in step number two, we're going to create something called a placeholder image, which we're going to use as a kind of temporary image until someone adds their own photograph. Then in step number three, we'll bring it all together to create your own scavenger hunt. When this has been created, if you want to, you can then share your scavenger hunt, either with a class full of pupils or perhaps with a friend and you can work on it in smaller groups. This then means you'll receive someone else's scavenger hunt. And then in step number five, I'm going to show you how to get up, go and explore, and hopefully complete your scavenger hunt document that you've now got. All you're going to need for today's quick lesson is an iPad with Keynote installed. Nothing else, nothing fancy, just an iPad with Keynote. It's amazing what you can do in just one app. So when you've got your iPad ready, hit play and let's move on to step number one. OK, so we'll open up Keynote and I'm going to create a new blank slide. It doesn't matter what colour background you have, but I'm going to delete those text boxes that always start on the page. From here, I need to then decide what my scavenger hunt is going to be. And if you're not completely clear, in this context, a scavenger hunt is where you set a challenge for someone to go and photograph things, maybe objects or people, animals, that match a certain criteria. So for instance, if you're doing science, you might want to classify different animal types. So you might have vertebrates and invertebrates, amphibians, reptiles, and you might ask people to go and get photographs of those particular animals. Or it might be that you want to explore materials and colour. So you might challenge someone to go and find objects that match the colours of the rainbow, one colour at a time, or perhaps things that are natural or man-made or organic. For me though, I'm going to look at food groups. So on my page, I'm going to make it look a bit like a plate, and I'm going to divide it up into the five basic food groups with labels. I'm going to put a few things in the background to make it look a bit fancy, but you don't have to make it look super fancy. As long as you've got a great idea and you've got a page that kind of shows what it is you want people to collect, then you're good to go for step number two. So take a pause here, get your keynote up to speed, and when you're ready, we'll start step two together. In step number two, we're going to create a placeholder image. Now that image is going to be very, very simple and probably quite colourful, but it's there to show the person doing your scavenger hunt that at the moment there's no picture in that box. So I'm going to make a new slide by pressing the plus button at the top of Keynote, and I want a blank slide. So I'm going to go onto the Shapes browser, and I'm going to drag on a rectangle. I'll make this a little bit larger, and I'll change the colour to make it stand out a bit. I think I also want to add a picture of a camera on top of that rectangle to make it really obvious what this placeholder means. So again, I'll go back to Add, Symbol, and I'll search for Camera, bring that onto the page, and change the colour. Now it's time to zoom in so that fills most of our page, and then to take a screenshot. If you've got an Apple Pencil in your hand, you can swipe up from the bottom right corner to do a screenshot. If not, you can tap and hold the Home button and the Lock button at the same time. Your screenshot will appear in the bottom corner of your iPad, and you need to tap on that before it disappears. This will bring up the screenshot editing screen. And from here, we're going to use the crop tools in the corner to crop in just to your placeholder image like this. When you've cropped right in, you can then press done in the top left corner and choose save to photos. That's now created a new image of your placeholder. And as long as you're happy that's saved, you can then delete the slide in Keynote by tapping on the thumbnail of the slide and then pressing delete. Have a few moments to make your placeholder image, and when you're ready, step number three will be here waiting for you. OK, before we add our placeholder image, I want to just make sure everything on the page is locked down, so it can't accidentally be moved around or changed. So I'm going to zoom out a tiny bit, and I'm going to tap and drag my finger across the entire page to select all of the objects at once. Then I can press Group, and on the Format menu I can then press Lock as well and that will lock everything on my page as one background layer so it's safe. When that's done, it's time to import your placeholder image by pressing the plus button on the toolbar, 
going onto photo or video, and then choosing a picture from your photo album. Hopefully, your new placeholder will be there, and when you tap on that, it will import it into Keynote. Now, on that format panel, if you go to image at the top, there is an option there that says set as placeholder. Tap on there. And now you won't notice much difference, but if you look carefully in the bottom corner of that image, you should see a little plus button in a circle. This is really important for later, but we'll leave it for now. Very quickly, while I'm here, I'm going to go onto the Style tab, and I'm going to add a border to my image. I really like the Polaroid border, but you can explore different options here to make your image look great. You can add a drop shadow, a reflection, whatever you want. Then it's a case of resizing your image so it fits where you want it to go, and then copying and pasting it multiple times to make as many different placeholders as you need. If I just whiz on a little bit here, you'll see that I'm then filling my plate of food with all these different placeholders, which means that whoever gets my scavenger hunt will have lots of places to add photos later on. Okay, that's it for step number three. Pause the video here while you get that done, and then when you're ready, we'll move on to step number four, where we share our scavenger hunts. This is a really simple step. So in the top right corner of Keynote, you're going to press the three little dots, and then when that comes up, you're going to press Share. From here, you're probably going to want to use AirDrop if you're sharing it to someone nearby, but if you're a teacher sharing it on a platform like Shobi, you can do that here as well. When you've shared your document with the person who you want to receive it, you can then wait patiently for someone to share their one with you. When you get that AirDrop menu come up, open in Keynote. Now, I'm very aware at this point that lots of people will perhaps be doing this at home by themselves and may not have someone to swap their scavenger hunts with, but don't worry, you can either do your own scavenger hunt or you can scan the QR codes on screen now to download my food group scavenger hunt or my types of materials scavenger hunt. When you download those, you can open them in Keynote and then you'll be ready for step number five. Okay, hopefully you've now shared your scavenger hunt and you've got one to work on yourself in step number five. So take a pause here and when you're ready, we'll begin together. This is the really fun bit where you can now go and gather loads of photographs using your camera to fill in your scavenger hunt. So to do this, you press the plus button on the bottom of one of those placeholders, and then you can take a photo using your camera. Just like normal, you use your camera. So if I'm looking for a picture of something plastic, I might find perhaps a Lego block and take a photo of that. And then when I'm happy, I can press use photo in the bottom corner. That will drop it straight into that placeholder for me, exactly where it was meant to be. If I want to fine tune my picture at all, I can double tap on that photo, and then I can use the little zoom bar to zoom in or away, and I can drag it around in that box slightly as well. So if I perhaps want to focus on one part of the image, I can zoom to that part and then press done and that will update the placeholder for me. And then all that's left to do is to go and gather as many pictures as you can to fill in your digital scavenger hunt. I'm sure by now you're going to want to pause the video and go and explore and get all of those pictures done. So do take lots of time to do that. But while you're here, let's very quickly recap on what we've done today. We have designed and created our own scavenger hunt using the Keynote app on our iPad. We've learned about placeholder images and we've learned about sharing and receiving files via AirDrop and other means of communication between devices. And now it's time to go and explore the world and complete our scavenger hunts. I really hope you've had fun on this activity today and I hope you've made something you're really proud of. Please, if you can, do share it with me on, on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook with the hashtag QuickLessons or let me know in the comments below how you got on with this tutorial. If you've got a great example of a digital scavenger hunt, you can even share the iCloud link to that template if you want to, and then other people can take part as well. And that's it. The only thing left for me to say to you today is that there are loads more quick lessons on my YouTube channel, so if you haven't seen them, do go and check those out. And while you're there, perhaps subscribe as well, so you won't miss any future quick lessons or quick tips videos. See you all next time. Bye.